Hello everyone. So in this uh, video, I'm going to start using the uh, circuit analysis algorithm in circuits that include uh, NMOS and PMOS transistors. As we explained, uh, the device, the transistor, the MOS transistor is a three terminal, actually is a four terminal device, but usually one of those terminals is internally connected to uh, to the, the body terminal is connected to the source. So if that's the case, then the device is a three terminal device. And then the equation for the component that we use uh, is obviously nonlinear, as we explained, but also you have to decide in what region of operation the device is uh, operating at before you choose what equation to use. Now, I've written that equation down here. Um, and I'm using the same format for both NMOS and PMOS. For uh, the only difference is the condition that we're using, but the same format is used. Now, ID is either equal to this equation, uh, where we assume the device is in saturation, and the region of operation is called saturation, or it's equal to the equation down here. Um, the difference between the, the application of the equation when it comes to using it for an NMOS and PMOS is really in the actual polarity of the voltages that are used. So for NMOS VGS, which is the voltage applied between the gate and source of the transistor, is a positive number and the threshold voltage is also a positive number, whereas uh, in a PMOS is exactly the opposite. So VGS and VT, they're both uh, negative numbers. And I have written these equations for the general uh, case. And if you're using it for an NMOS, then this would be KN and VTN as it's given for this specific, these two specific circuits. Or uh, if you're using it for a PMOS, then this would be KP and VTP. Other than that, uh, you can use the same equation for both PMOS and NMOS. Now, one thing that you have to uh, realize here is that both of these equations are only uh, valid if the device is turned on, um, and that means for the NMOS, um, the VGS has to be larger than the threshold voltage, and for the PMOS, the VGS has to be smaller than the threshold voltage. Again, uh, the VT for PMOS is a negative number. So the absolute value of VGS for both cases has to be larger than uh, the threshold voltage. Okay, uh, with that, let's start analyzing these two circuits. I want to start with the device uh, to, to the circuit to the left. So we label the circuit. Uh, in this specific case, the gate and the drain are connected to each other. I'm just going to call it VG. But really, this is VG equal to VD. So let me notate that here. And uh, on top, we have 5 volts. And there's only one current passing through the circuit. As we know, the great current is equal to 0. Therefore, when I start writing the equations, I don't have to write a case here. So we directly move on to equations for components. Uh, for the resistor. ID is equal to 5 volts minus uh, the gate voltage divided by the resistance RD. And then for the transistor, I have to decide which one to use. In this specific case, this is actually not going to be a guess. And let's see why that is. So VGS, uh, the definition is VG minus VS. Uh, in our case, Vs is actually 0, so this is really Vg. And Vds is equal to Vd minus Vs, generally speaking. Again, Vs is 0 in our case, so this is Vd. But now we already said that Vd and Vg are the same because we uh, connected the drain to the gate. So from this, Vgs is actually the same as VDS for our case, which means that automatically VDS 
is always greater than VGS minus VT because it's like saying a number is larger than the same number subtracted from a positive number, which obviously is a true statement. So with this, the first uh, condition up here for an NMOS is always actually met, which means the device is automatically in saturation. So when I pick the equation, I'm actually certain that the equation that I have to pick is uh, the uh, saturation equation. So this would be Kn.25 times Vgs, which in our case is just Vg, minus Vt, which is 0.8 to the power of 2. Now I have two equations and two unknowns, assuming Rd is given. If you have the value of Rd, then you can calculate Id and Vg. And once you have those, um, then again, you really don't have to check for the validity of that assumption for this specific case. And uh, the only thing that you have to make sure that is happening in, in this case is to make sure that VGS actually is larger than VT. That needs to be checked because otherwise then the device is just off. And um, for, for a situation like that, uh, if you, you check and you see that VGS is not, is not greater than, than VT, then the device is just simply off and there is not current, no current is passing through the circuit. Uh, also notice that in this case, the, all of the cases where you actually deal with the transistor, you have to solve a quadratic equation and therefore you're going to get two answers, two uh, solutions. But obviously one of those solutions is incorrect and you can check that by just checking to make sure that the VG that you're calculating is greater than VT. So the one that gives you a VG that is greater than VT and a positive ID would be the correct answer to your circuit. Um, so uh, let's just pick, for example, a value here. Let's say RD is equal to 1K and see what happens. So if the, that's the case, then I'm going to just use, because I'm using milliamp, this would be 1. And assuming RD is 1K, so this would be directly 5 minus VG. Now I can put that in down here. So 5 minus VG is equal to 0.25. Vg, sorry, Vg. Minus 0.8 to the power of 2. Now, if you solve this equation, you're going to get actually two values for Vg. It could be either 3.36 or it could be minus 5.76. Now, from these two, obviously you can tell which one is the correct answer. Uh, this would be the correct answer, as uh, you can't really turn on an, an NMOS with a voltage that is VGS that is negative, and you, moreover, you don't even get a negative voltage in a, sort, in a circuit where the only voltage applied to the circuit is a positive 5 volt. So that's uh, obviously wrong. And once you have VG, you put it back in, back in this equation, and uh, you calculate ID. This was assuming that RD with the assumption that Rd is equal to 1k, this calculation, just as an example. Now, uh, with that, I'm going to now move on to the second circuit and see how that's different. Now, for the circuit to the right, we're going to label circuit again. So this time VG is automatically 5 um, volts. This is VS and is 0 volts. This is my VD. And again, there's only one current in the circuit. So I'm going to start writing equations now. 
on KCL, equations for components for the resistor ID is equal to uh, 5 minus VD divided by RD. And for the transistor, I have to pick one of the two. This time, I'm not in the same situation. And this is quite possible that I can uh, basically be in either of these two situations. I'm going to start by assuming that I'm in uh, saturation. So Kn ID is equal to 0.25. Now, um, Vgs in my case is equal to Vg minus Vs. And it's Vg, I know it's 5 volts. And Vs is 0, so Vgs is actually 5. So that's given. Um, so 5 minus 0.8 to the power of 2 is my current. So again, from this I can calculate ID and then assuming that RD is given, I can calculate VD. Once that's done, then I actually have to go back and make sure VDS was greater than VGS minus VT. Now, VDS in my case, again, is equal to VD minus VS, VD minus 0 or VD. So I'll take VD as a result of uh, after doing the math here and then look at VGS minus VT, which I know VGS minus VT in my case was basically 5 minus 0.8 which is 4.2 volts. So when I calculate VD from this, I compare that to 4.2 given here. If that happened to be greater than 4.2, then my assumption was correct. But as soon as this voltage goes below 4.2, then this assumption is no longer correct and I have to go back and change the equation and use this second equation this time and basically recalculate uh, the voltage VD and the current in the circuit. Now whether or not that's going to happen is a really a function of what RD is. The larger RD is, then the voltage VD is going to be reducing, therefore it's going to go below 4.2 volts, and then the device is going to enter a triode region. And the smaller RD is the other way around. There's a possibility, high possibility that voltage 4.2 uh, VGS is going to be larger than 4.2, and therefore the device is actually operating in saturation as uh, assumed. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, hope this has been helpful.